Hello there, Mr. Chan here for Algebra 2, about to start 6-2, Exponential Models. Please turn your note takers to page 143, and let's get started. We are going to explore some real world problems here that are linked to exponential functions. One is studying exponential growth of bacterial cultures. Each is carefully controlled to maintain a specific growth rate. Copy and complete the table to find the number of bacterial cells in each culture. We have four cultures here, A, B, C, and D, as you can see in each row. Each of those cultures start with 10,000 bacteria, but each culture has a different growth rate. A is 8%, B is 4%, C is 2% and D is 1%. They are allowed to grow a certain number of days. Find the number of bacteria after those many days. So what I'm gonna do here is to manually show you the calculation to figure out and fill out that table. Let's start with culture A with only one day that has passed, all right? Keep in mind, we are starting with 10,000 bacteria. Then we're going to add 8% of that 10,000 10, bacteria to its original amount. So I start out 10,000 plus 8% of 10,000. 8% converted to a decimal is 0 0.08. Of means multiply 10,000. So let me zoom in a little bit more. Great. When you punch that into a calculator, you will get this answer right here, 10,800. That makes sense, right? Let's see what happens to the other ones. Start with 10,000. For culture B, this time we're adding 4% on the first day to it. 4% of course is 0 0.04 of 10,000, but we're gonna add another day of 4% to it. So what does that mean? We need to multiply that answer that we got for the first day with another multiplier. In this case, we want another 4% of that answer. So it's like adding on 104%. 104% is 1.04. See how it compounds itself? You may have heard of the expression before, right? Getting in a uh, percentage on top of intra, uh, percentage. And when you punch that into your calculator, you'll get 10,816. Gets a little more complicated. Let's look at the next one. Uh, we have 10,000, of course, for the third scenario, the culture. This time we're doing 2% uh, of 10,000. But we want a additional second, third, and fourth day. So let's just consolidate all this. Aren't we taking 10,000? and multiplying by a percentage, in this case, 102% of itself, but we're doing it for four days. You starting to see a pattern here emerging, and eventually this is actually our exponential model. When you punch that into the calculator, you'll get 10,824. And finally, for eight days, let's just don't have to manually write this all this stuff out. We're going to literally write down 10,000 times the multiplier of 1%, 1.01, and we're doing it eight days in a row. And when you punch that into the calculator, you'll get 10,829 little bacteria. Okay. Okay. So that's a great way of looking at how things can 
compound itself, so to speak. I'm actually going to skip the rest of this page and move on to the next page. Let's do it. Your homework will include problems that look like number one, example one here on the next page. Now, before I do that, we're going to talk about population growth and also how money is compounded in a bank. And it follows along the basic exponential model. I'm going to write this ahead of time right now because it's kind of linked to money too, called compound interest. Write this off to the left here. Compound interest follows the same kind of a deal, but the letters are a little different. Write this down. A equals P times parentheses 1 plus R over N to the NT power. A is the final amount. Fine. P is called the principal. This is also known as the initial amount. What you start with, whether it's money or bacteria, whatever, right, population, fine. The one inside the parentheses is referring to 100%, right, you're including that. R is the rate. Okay, that has to be converted to a decimal if it starts out as a percentage. T is time. And there's one more letter, N, shows up twice in this equation. N is the number of times interest is compounded per year. Now I'm going to tell you what N is, depending on some of the vocabulary. Well, oh, say something like monthly, weekly, daily, and so on and so forth. Maybe even quarterly. You may have heard of annually. Hmm, and there's a bunch more you can throw into here. It's like a bi-monthly or some, I mean, it can go on and on and on. Bi-monthly, I mean, you can say bi-weekly, bi-daily, whatever. Semi-monthly, some examples that might pop up. So in terms of the value of N, monthly, well, of course we know is 12, weekly we know there are 52 weeks, daily 365, quarterly, that's referring to how many times a year? Four times a year. Annually, it's once a year. Bi-monthly literally means every two months. How many two months are there in a year? There are six two-monthers. Semi-monthly would be 24 because there's 24 half months, so to speak. Semi means half, okay? I could go on and on and on and on. Now, number one, I didn't really know about until I jumped into this particular book. It's kind of interesting. Rewrite an exponential function to identify a rate. They tell you the population in a small town is increasing annually at 1.8%. When you convert 1.8%, that is 0 0.018 as a decimal. Here, for this particular problem, we are dealing with growth. Right? It increases by 1.8%. Question, what is the quarterly rate of population increase? Now, this is kind of like working backwards. They tell you at the end of the year, we make an additional 1.8% increase in the population. Question, what if you were to chop up that year into four quarters? That's where four quarterly rate comes in play. 
So I'm going to do something that will help you with your homework. I'm going to use a basic formula, not the compound interest formula that I set up a few moments ago, sorry. I was going to apply that to example two. But for this particular problem, I'm going to use a basic y equals p times p for population, one plus, in this case, 0 0.018 close parentheses to a t power, okay? It's very basic. We don't know what the population is. It doesn't matter what p is, but we know that the rate is 0.018 for that year. Let's just crunch backwards and try to break it into four quarters. Now, the way to do it is kind of unique. And by the way, when you clean this up, you'll get this equation. P times 1.018 to the T power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a fraction that really doesn't change the original problem. That fraction I'm going to introduce is 4 over 4, like that, T. That's basically 1, right? So I'm working some fraction magic backwards. I'm going to undo a power power situation here. And I'm going to break out that one fourth right there. Watch this. This is going to look like magic, but please try to trust me on this. I'm going to split that four fourths into one fourth times to the power of four to the t power. I didn't mean to say times, I meant to the power of, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm just breaking up the four fourths into one fourth times four. And what I want to do now is to punch that into the calculator and that will give me my quarter growth rate. When you punch that into the calculator, you'll get this funny decimal. Point, sorry, 1.018 point zero zero four four six nine nine four okay i don't really need the one part that's just 100 percent but this part right here if i move the decimal over to to the right i get point four four seven percent per quarter growth. Okay. Kind of a weird answer, isn't it? But that's what they want. Why can't you just divide an annual interest rate by four to obtain a quarterly interest rate? The problem is that this is not linear. This is exponential growth. So I had to do this weird kind of a fraction there. Otherwise, it would have been easy just to divide by four. So the answer is it's an exponential growth. It's not linear. So that was an interesting way of looking at how we can divide up percentages in a year into whether it's monthly, daily, weekly, quarterly, annually, okay? That'll be interesting. Hey, let's do something different. Money. Just a quick reminder, and it's kind of off the screen right now. A, the final value is equal to their principal times one plus the interest rate converted to a decimal, divided by the number of times the interest is compounded per year, to the power of NT, Yay, we talked about what N could be, monthly, daily, quarterly, whatever. All right, let me know if you have any questions, okay? Okay, we are going to solve a problem. There's a typo. The word continuously should not be there. That's safe for number three, okay? Number three is continuously, but number two is not continuously. 
Here we go. Example two. $3,000 is invested in an account that earns 3% annual interest rate, compounded monthly, okay? What is the value of the account after 10 years? Let's write a formula. The final amount is what we're looking for, A. The initial amount, P, is $3,000. Let's put that in. Using it right there, okay? That's your P value, that's your initial amount. Great times one plus the interest rate, 3% needs to be converted to a decimal. So 3% is 0 0.03. You guys see that? Nice. Divided by the number of times that interest is compounded per year. In this case, we're looking for compounded monthly. How many months are in a year? 12. It goes right there, ladies and gentlemen. Great. To the power of 12 times, oh, 10 years. Okay, we can deal with that. 10 years times 10. <clears throat> so when you punch this into the calculator, you gotta be extra, extra careful, and then it'll we'll give you the final answer, okay? So let's switch to a calculator. Here we go. All right, so we have $3,000 times, in this case, parentheses, one plus 0.03 divided by 12, you can kind of see it right up here, close parentheses, to the power of 12 times 10. Now you can put 120 in there if you want to, or you can just write it, type it in all the whole thing if you want to. 12 times 10. Close parentheses equals, and there it is, everybody. Four thousand forty-eight dollars and six cents. Let's transfer that to our notes here. Yay. That's a good amount of money. That's how you calculate your interest plus your original initial value uh, principal that you plug in, okay? Ooh, same problem, but the time changes to 100 years. Any predictions what's gonna happen there? We're gonna set it up the same way, pretty much. Everything's the same. But instead of 10 years, it's 100 years. I don't know. I have no clue what that's going to be. We're going to rely on our calculator and see what happens when we calculate that. $3,000 again times 1 plus in parentheses 0 0.03, 3%, divided by 12, close to the power of 12 times 100. That's a lot of years. Whoa, 60,000. That went up pretty nicely. $31.45. Very good. Let's transfer that to here. Our notes. It's a lot of money. 60,000, $31 and 45 cents, I believe. Yay, very good. Now, we can get silly. I mean, no one really puts money in for 100 years, right? I don't know. What this is leading to is the idea of how money is compounded in a bank. But we've just talked about bacteria and now money. Where is this formula leading to is the question. In the next section, we explore the idea of what if we are not compounding money, but what if we in increase the number of times we calculate the interest money per year? What if it wasn't 12 months 
or 52 weeks or 365 days? What if we compound it like hourly or by the minute or by the second? Doesn't that sound kind of familiar to what we're all used to in our universe? It sounds like things that grow naturally, right? How things grow continuously is the key. You've heard of the expression, money doesn't grow on trees. Let's pretend money does grow on trees right now, just for the sake of everything, right? So it should kind of emphasize what's going on here. Let's pretend we are talking about money on trees, right? I don't know how to draw money on trees. Let's just do this. What if we can grow money naturally? So let's ask this question. What if N, the number of times money is compounded per year is equal to a big number, right? Just imagine one divided by, I mean, these are just generic numbers, by the way, big to the big power times time. What's weird, and I'll show you on the graphing calculator when we're in class, is that this particular situation approaches a number that's just as famous as pi, but doesn't get as much press as pi, this number, 2.718281828, uh, it doesn't repeat by the way, it might look like for the first few digits, four, five, nine, and it's still irrational by the way. This is a number that's famous in math, physics and science. This is called the natural base. This is how things grow in our universe. It's definitely still irrational, meaning it's a number that doesn't have a pattern. But this is a universal growth number. This is how things grow naturally. Okay. Okay. Which yields the greatest return on investment? Compounding quarterly, hourly, continuously. I'm just going to tell you the word continuously is the greatest return simply because you don't grow faster than anything else naturally. We use a letter for this special base called. 2.718, it's the letter E. You know like how pi isn't famous, like the Greek letter pi? Here, E is known as the natural base. It's actually on our scientific calculators. Okay, E we'll be using in place of the base. So what if we did, like instead of 100 years, what if we did like, I don't know, many, many times, right? If everything got big. And I'll show you that in the next page. Eventually, because of that base. So I'm jumping ahead of myself. This is the compound interest formula. What happens if n gets big and we actually create a new formula? Looks very similar to the one that's the compound interest formula. It is a equals p, looks the same so far. The base though, this whole thing, is replaced by the letter e to the RT power, ladies and gentlemen. This is compound continuously formula. Continuously compounded interest. 
pert, we call this sometimes. All right. So if the word continuously is used in a word problem with numbers, we use pert. If they mention monthly, daily, hourly, whatever, we use the compound interest from, the, from there. Okay. All right. Let's go to the next page. Ooh, we're actually going to do some problems. Keyword here is continuously. Yay. Pert is my formula. Pert is actually still around. It's a shampoo that we use uh, before when growing up, and it's in the storage. You can buy it's shampoo. It's a shampoo formula. You invest $125,000 in an account that earns 4.75% annual interest compounded continuously. That's pert, everybody. Let's write that down. What is the value of the account after 15 years? Okay. P is the same. That's how much money you're putting in. Let's put in 125000 That's a lot of money. Interest rate converted to a decimal is, let's see what's going on here, two to the left. Great. That is 0 0.0475 times 15 years. Great. Let's grab our calculator and punch it in. Clear the calculator. I have 125,000. Wow, that's a lot of money. Times, oh, you guys see this? This is the my E button to the power of parentheses 0.0475 times 15 years. Close parentheses equals, holy guacamole, that's a lot of money. I've doubled my money. Wow, over $254,000. Let's change that to here, our note taker. Wow, 15 years, we double our money. Seems like a long time for you students, but eh, it'd be nice to have that money in 15 years. Woo. This is for money that's compounded continuously. You'll never get a number bigger than that because the, the, the natural base E is 2.718, right? Oh, how about 30 years? Boy, any guesses out there what that will be? Pretty much the same setup. But it's not 15, it's 30 years. Grab my calculator. Let's see what they say. Here we go. You don't just double this one because 15 to 30 is double. Okay? Trust me on that. Clear. 125,000 times parentheses. Oh, sorry. Clear that again. Let me try again. 125,000 times E to the power of 0.0475 times 30 years. Close parentheses equals, whoa, more than double, $519,732.23. That's a lot of money. Let's write that down. Here we go. Yay. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is compound continuously. All right, number five is a challenging problem. We are actually going to come up with an equation based off of data values for the years 1950, 1954, 1955. A survey determined the value of area of land over a period of several years since 1950. The land was worth 31,000 in 1954 and 35,000 in 1955. We're actually going to extrapolate a model based off of these data points, okay? That's what we're doing. All right, so I'm gonna use a generic uh, compound uh, function. Y equals A times B to the X to make things just very, very basic. B is right. the growth factor.
write that off to the left. It's going to be a ratio or a division of y values. It's basically slope. My x value in this case are the years, and we are picking on, uh, yeah, the points that are up there, okay? All right. Let's do the ratio here between 1954 and 1955 for the base. Remember, this is the slope, okay? Now, there's only been one year that has changed between them. So I'm going to do a ratio of the y values. In this case, it's 35,000 divided by 31,000. And because it's over a year, that will give me my ratio right away. So this reduces actually 35 over 31. That's my base, ladies and gentlemen. Let's put that in. Y equals A times 35 over 31. Great. To the power of X. Now, ultimately, we have to figure out what the initial value is, A. To figure that out, I need to plug in a coordinate point. The best coordinate point I'm going to plug in will be the latest figure. And in this case, it's going to be 35,000 in the year 1955. Okay, now I'm not going to put in 1955. I have to do 1955 relative to 1950. So I'm going to use year number five for that relative, because everything's based off of 1950. 1955, five years have passed, okay? So this is going to be my coordinate point that I'm going to use. In this case, it's going to be five comma 35,000 to put it into the equation so I can solve for A. Let's plug that in. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> When you do the actual math here, because eventually I need to solve for A by dividing by 35 over 31 to the fifth power to both sides. It's kind of an ugly number to punch in the calculator. Wish me luck. All right, and that'll give me my A value, yeah? There we go, let's try it. Hope I can do this on a generic Scientific calculator. So I have, nine, let's see, 35,000 divided by that funny thing. Let me use double parentheses just in case. 35 divided by 31, close parentheses to the power of five, close parentheses on that one, equals, yay. That's my initial value back in 1950. Interesting. Your A value is $19,078.15. This is, of course, in 1950. So, now that I know what A is, I can now write my function y equals nineteen thousand seventy eight point one five times a common base of thirty five over fifteen of uh, thirty five over thirty one I misspoke there oops to the power of x and that is my generic formula based off of data collected from that year those two years all right I'm going to skip example six it's actually been done in the book. Let's go to the last page and turn out some numbers here. All right. Last page. There's not a lot of room here. They're asking us to find monthly and quarterly rates based off of two problems. Oh boy. I'm going to zoom in a little more here. 
so you can see it better on the video. I'm gonna write a little small. This is like the example one that we started off with uh, during this lesson, okay? We're gonna work backwards. To figure out what the monthly rate is and the quarterly rate, I have to play around with the powers. Recall, if I set this up and extract 12 over 12 or 4 over 4, you'll get these setups, okay? It'll be 2,000 bucks times 1.03 to the 1 12th power to the 12 T power like that. And when I punch this into the calculator and you're gonna have to trust me on this one, just that part alone meaning monthly rate, I get this number. 1.00246627. That is my monthly rate, okay? As a percentage, you move the decimal place to the right, ignoring the one, what you'll get is da, 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 0.247% for monthly, okay? Trust me on that. You'll get pretty good at this after you see me do a few more of these. Do the same exact thing but I want it quarterly for this particular scenario. One fourth to the power of one fourth, whoops, T. This part right here comes out to this number right here. 1.007, and I did these numbers ahead of time, so you have to forgive me for 17072 to the power 40. So ladies and gentlemen, two to the right. I get 0.742% for my quarterly rate. Okay. Well, number six is pretty much the same thing. I'm going to set that up. Any questions about number five? Kind of interesting how we have to figure that out without the benefit of something being linear. This is exponential. So I'm doing this thing. And the important part is punching that part into my problem. And I get this funny number. 1.00447169. And move two places to the right, ignoring the one. I get for the new scenario 500, whatever, that dollars, 0.447%. Okay? That's for monthly. And for quarterly, let's finish it up. One fourth to the forty power. A lot of writing here, yeah. A lot of writing. Hang in there. I get this funny number: one point zero one three four seven five one seven four. Yay! And again, two spaces to the right. Oh, this time I get a pretty big jump there. This gives me one point three. For eight percent, okay. Not too bad. How are we doing out there? Okay. All right. Back to money again. Find the total number of money invested in the account at the end of the given period. All right. This is compounded monthly, so we're going to use a regular compounded monthly formula. A equals P times one plus R over N to the NT power. And this equals to 2,000 bucks, yay. Times one plus interest rate. Oh, I gotta convert that to 0 0.03 right there. And monthly there are 12 months in a year. And we're doing five years. Punch out the calculator. 
we get this up good. Ooh, not bad. Five years. Oh, the word continuously pops out for number eight. We have to use a different formula. This is the perp formula. I'll use the calculator for that one for fun. $1,500 times e to the, oh, I've got to convert that percentage, 0.015. Be careful, two spaces now, not one space. If you do one space, you might get 0.15, and that's incorrect. That would imply you're doing 15%, which is crazy. We're doing this for six years on this one? Yeah. Let's punch that in the calculator. We have $1,500 times E to the power of parentheses 0.015 times six years. Close equals, ooh, there it is, $1,641.26. Fine by me. Let's write this in our notes. Make sure you use those calculators properly. Use plenty of parentheses. Ooh, write an exponential model given two points as practices. Generic formula. Great. Looks like I'm going to find the slope first for B. So to do that, I'm going to do 70 over 55, the ratio of the Y values. This actually reduces to 14 over 11. Yeah, divisible by five, kind of interesting. Let's plug that in. And we're gonna pick on a point. We'll pick on this guy right here, 470 for my X, Y point, okay? Let's put that in, 70 equals to A value. I don't know what that is. The base, we just uh, did a quick ratio, reduce the Y values, 14 over 11, to the power of X, which is four. All right, solving for A, let's divide through by that ugly thing right there. And trust me, A will be 26.678207. Fine. Final answer for my model, my exponential model is Y equals, we'll call it 26.7, okay? Times that ratio Y values to the X power. So this should help you with your homework right there. I'll be honest, these are kind of challenging, definitely. Number 10, let's crank that out. What's our B value? That's the ratio of the Y's there. In this case, 25 over 12. That doesn't reduce. That stays stuck for B. Let's go ahead and pick on a point. In this case, let's pick 825, okay? Here we go, 25 equals to A value, no clue, times the B value, 25 over 12, to the power of eight. All right, A will be equal to that funny number We'll double check everything, make sure I did not do anything wrong here. Oh, that's, yeah, sure. Just wanna double check everything. You never know when you mess things up, right? Okay, it's fine. Punch in the calculator, A is approximately 0 0.07044. Yay, we can write our, Model y equals 0 0.07 times that funny ratio, 25 over 12 to the power of x. 
Woo! Almost done. Hanging in there? All right. Paul invests $6,450 in an account that earns continuously compound interest at an interest rate of 2.8. What is the value of the account after eight years? Okay, this is pretty straightforward. He is continuously, we're going to use PERT, aren't we? Plug the numbers in. 6450. Interest rate converted to a decimal is 0 0.028. To the power of eight years. Punch out in the calculator, you will get $8,069.41. Woohoo! I think we are done. Thank you for hanging in there. These are word problems. They're tough. They're not easy. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you very much. Uh, see you next time. Bye bye.